Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, before we get to the next hand, uh, I wanted you to go ahead and chime in on that, brother. Go ahead. One of the things I feel that the dominant society does, and we all aware of it, is basically, you know how they had the term shut up and dribble? Basically, it's shut up and slave. And that's what they want us to do. They want us to just be quiet and slave for them. And that's really what they want to say. And they're never going to say that out loud because they know they're going to get that smoke. But deep down inside, that's really what they're feeling. And, you know, the dominant society always does this. And I want the family to realize and recognize that in terms of gender, we are the only community and lineage that they ever speak gender. They never, ever talk about Latino women vote separately from Latino men. They never talk about Arabic men and women vote separately. Only when it comes to us do they say the women over here, the men over there, you need to follow behind this person, you need to follow behind that person. They never do that with any other group in America. So we have to be very, very understanding of the play that they're trying to do and they're trying to propose upon us. Foundation of Black American Men and Women, we vote together, we stand together in all operations. You may have some counterfeits or some coons that may derail themselves and go off brand, that's fine. Everybody got that. We regulate ours. We don't let ours run amok. But the fact that they get on television consistently, and we'll sit back and call it. I, I promise y'all, if you just go by everybody's timeline, you go back a year ago, two years ago, three years ago, we literally sit down and systematically predict every single tactic that the Democratic Party is going to use, and then we sit back and we watch it happen. So they're not even to the point where they're doing anything new. Everything they do is old, it's outdated, and it's predictable. I can tell you right now, let me just give me a number, if the Democratic Party's still around, because we might break them before then. But in the year, you know, 2032. They're going to be saying the black man's and the black woman's kids right now is, you know, 10, 11, 12 years old who are going to be grown folks. And they're going to be running that same game on them the same way they ran that game on our parents. The only difference is, is in this era right now, we G check it and we regulate it. We're going to put an end to it. So if it does persist, it's because we didn't get the job done. I believe that we will get the job done. And these gender games are going to get regulated like we're regulating it now. And that's why that woman king flopped. And let me say this. Uh, Kid Gravy talked about how the movie did. Movies have to make three to four times their budget. That movie had uh, millions of dollars and it only made 19 and it's going to drastically cut off. Beatzilla, you understand the music industry. You remember when they used to sell CDs, family, where that first week sales will be, you know, uh, 100,000. You feel me? And then that next week sales will go right down the drain. Everyone knows when it comes to Hollywood, whether that's music or whether that is film, that the second week is reality time. OK, the second week is when you really genuinely see. And to be honest with you, Woman King's numbers this week were not even impressive. There is no way. And I've already seen calculations, you know, from uh, strategists that say there's no way that that movie's going to even match anything that they've ever put out. So that movie already we can chalk up is a flop. And you can also chalk it up to foundational black American men and women are the people who made that movie go from high promise to in the trash can. Real talk. Um, so let me see. Everybody who's on stage, go ahead and put your hands up um, if you uh, want to speak. And because uh, if not, I might have to let some of y'all down. So go ahead and put them hands up. Let us know you want to speak. Um, so, Mr. Rectangle, we are going to you and then Nilo Z, then ATL High Tech. So, Mr. Rectangle, go ahead. Man, so much to unwrap with y'all. I've been sitting here listening to this nonsense for a few minutes. I do want to, before I speak any further, make sure that I capture your points succinctly about why you should boycott the, the woman king. From what I heard so far, your proposal is for us to boycott the woman king because there are white women producers and a white woman screenwriter, a screenplay writer on this. And, and if I heard you right, it's because as black African Americans, we need to recognize the fact that that region of Africa is, and particularly the Dahomey, was responsible for enslaving our ancestors. Any other reasons before I, before I try to give you a counterpoint or at least something to think about? Did uh, I miss no. anything? No, that is that is roundabout. Um, and again, when I say the homie, well, one part that you left out is that uh, slaves started coming over here in uh, the late 1500s. Well, actually, earlier 1500s. And then by the time 1776 came around, the Dahomey was still not really on the scene like that. They got their big push later on. Slavery was already well moving. So that means that they already were well aware that this thing was going and they willfully took part. So we're, this movie is set in 1823, not 1776 or before. 
So that is well in the heights of slavery to the point to when they ended their slavery, the places that they were doing business with had already abolished slavery on their own homelands. So that's the people that we're talking about to get. So you, you address this correctly. Go ahead, brother. All right. Great. I, I, I would, I would encourage everyone up here instead of talking to each other in this echo chamber to go out and do just a little bit of research and then on anything, it doesn't matter what it is. Don't pontificate on something you haven't experienced. Hold on, time out, time out, time out, brother, brother. Like I've seen the brother. Time out, hey, brother, hold on, time out, time I've out, real quick, brother. Brother, 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 yes. brother, time out, time out, time out. Yes, I'm, I'm gonna let you rock, but don't start this by saying that we need to study or we need to learn more. There are a lot of intelligent people in this panel, brother. Very, very, I'm one of them. So I um, started off by saying what we need to do and we need to study more and learn more. There are brilliant minds in this panel. That's given the connotation that you're superior knowledge wise and your point that you're fixing to make, which I'm going to allow you to make. That's basically given the connotation that you know and we don't know and you're going to tell us. So I'm letting you know, family, uh, I, I appreciate the point that you're going to make and we're going to allow you to make your point. But I can't have you starting off by saying we need to study everything that we've said and have spoken has been studied. It's been studied recently. It's been studied uh, permanently. It's been studied in the past. It took years for us to maintain and to get this knowledge, brother. So go ahead. The floor is yours. Well, good. If that was the case, the brother wouldn't have said what he just said, because the kingdom of the homie was started in 1600. It lasted all the way to 1904. Well within the range of slave did, trade, did, of I the did, Atlantic did, slave uh, trade. No, no, hold on, wait, 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 well, wait, 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 First off, don't come in here being disingenuous and misrepresenting -re what I just clearly stated. I didn't, I said when they got rolling, I didn't say they didn't exist. See, now you're already starting to come in here doing the disingenuous talking. We gonna let you rock, but you're not finna lie or misrepresent what the hell we just said. So now again, here's let me let me let me just reset this real quick and make this real plain. What we are talking about is we will not celebrate any type of black slavery that was going on while our ancestors was here. Is that too hard for you to understand? Hey, you don't have to talk condescending to me. All you gotta oh, do is give me a chance to finish speaking. All you gotta do is give me a chance to finish speaking. All you have to do is give me no no brother. This is how this works. Under my little icon here, it says host. You don't come in here being disrespectful like you did. You came in here talking condescending to start with. We still let you rock, although you came in disrespectful. So check that rectangle, man. What I'm going to need you to understand, I asked you a very simple question. So don't come trying to check nobody. You can answer that question to the host or you can go. Now, my can question. Yeah, yeah, can you say your there? question, please? Say what? Can you please restate your question? Okay, my question again is we are against celebrating slavery going on when our ancestors were here in slavery building this country. Yeah, can you express why? Can we express why we would not celebrate not slavery? We, not we, you. And you said, I'm asking you, why would you, why? Why this, would this, I not celebrate black enslavers while my family was enslaved in this country? Is no, the no, point no, is no, 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 come on, don't switch it up. You said slavery. Now you that. said enslavers. Now, if you're going to be genuine, be genuine across the board. You, you can't call me for double speaking while you double speak. I'm asking no, you a question. No, it, let me ask you a question, please, if you don't mind. I want to know if you want a different point of view. If you don't, then you just push me down to the audience and I won't give it to you. But if you would, I'd like to tell you. Get the point out. I was no doubt. Yeah, I try to get it out. The, the the point out. The point is that I have in all of my my African American, not Africa, my African American studies, and all of my history of researching this. Never once have I seen any body of entertainment, any any collaborative group. Uh, production of or any academic representation of address the full scope of the African slave trade and Africans involvement in that that is addressed in this movie. And you would know that if you watched it. The fact that you don't know that, I believe, I believe, this is my own personal opinion, I'm just expressing it, that if you would 
watch it first and then come with your opinion, you may have a different perspective. Okay, now here, thank you, sir. I just wanted to make sure that's what you were saying. Here's, again, let me reiterate my point. We ain't giving no money to no double crime treacherous movie piece that's talking about people having part in slavery while our ancestors were already here in slavery. If this is too hard for your middle school understanding, that's cool. We can agree to disagree. Throughout all of your glorious grand exploration in Black American history and the history of slavery, for some reason, Black enslavers white enslavers, Arab enslavers. See, there's no distinction here about anything. All enslavers are bad. So hell no, we would not be celebrating any of that because it makes no sense to do. So what you're saying is these people had glorious past and glorious. They also had a terrible end by way of the slave trade. So since in all of your understanding of these Dahomey, you do understand that they also put their own family members in slave after they imploded on themselves with all this greatness that you keep talking about. You understand that, right, Mr. Rectangle? Yeah. Can I give you an analogy just so no, you no, can no. understand no, no, what no. I'm trying the to answer say? Answer to that question. Yes, no. Well, but listen, well, listen, of course I know that. Okay, listen, you, you, you can, listen, don't, don't, don't listen, don't listen. You check me on disrespecting you or giving you content, yet you use all of these adjectives to do the same to me. Just relax a minute and let's have a conversation. Okay. See, here's where we have a real big problem with family. Let me address this issue. When y'all come into somebody's house, you come into that person's house with respect. This is why I was talking about this earlier. The black folks who always want to come in here bypass the fact that white women are taking that. I'm assuming this man has a white wife, but they are bypassing the fact that white women are inserting themselves in our culture to try to come check the black man. What the hell is wrong with y'all? I mean, what makes you think I got a white wife? Because you come in here what, talking what makes you an think issue. I have a black wife of 35 years. What are you talking about? Well, then why are you sidestepping the truth here, sir? You ain't even giving me a chance to address the white women. Hey, boy. hey, hey can, I, hey, can I chime in real quick? Mr. Rectangle, Please. where are you from? I'm from Miami, Florida, Liberty City, born and raised, 64th and 10th. Where, where are your parents from? Your grandparents? Where's your lineage? Are you are you foundational Black American? Sierra Leone. What do you mean foundational? Oh, oh I knew black it. American. Hey, I t hey, I told y'all. Hey, <laughs> there go the red heron right there. Hey, where, where, did you happen to be on Edmund Pettus Bridge with John Lewis? Of course not. What are you talking about? I'm not you sure? I, I'm sure. It just sounds like you might have well, been listen. on Edmund Pettus Bridge, man, because I know okay, the Billy so, Club. The so Billy Club met your head up, brother. So you know this always happens. You have these ad hominem. <laughs> No, what always happens is you're going to uh, respect when we talk. Y'all heard that, family. That's not that's a non FBA. That's an African-American talking to a foundational black American. We break it down all the time. Our brother Tariq Nasheed breaks it down all the time. And now we have a prime example of when you put some real certified FBAs in the place and then you put a non FBA, an African-American. He already yeah, started off calling himself an African-American. So th there we go. Therefore, it's FBA. Whole different breed, and then it's an African American who apparently has left a part of his brain on Edmund Pettus Bridge or back in Sierra Leone or wherever he's from. At the end of the day, it's FBA, and we regulate. Thank yeah. you, Zilla. Oh, so you, so so y'all just gonna let that stand? No, I'm, I'm y'all don't know. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on, hold on. You just you gonna, what you the do dude, man? I, I see. Here's my problem. Respect our room, brother. And I mean, I got this all that will slow it down. Because the first thing that you need to show is respect and honor the host here, pimp. So whatever you feeling, let that go for right now. And we can have an honest discussion. But do not try to overtalk me on this stage. <laughs> so with, my, with that being said, we're going to go to some other hands up here because we gave you enough time. On where we, we'll come back to you. So don't go. Just, just hold, your, hold your peace. Um, let's see. That would be Nilo Z. Go ahead because I see you got kicked out and had to come back. Go ahead. Hey, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Hello? Hey, okay. First of all, I want to say is that as far as the other brother, listen, I don't have to consume a lie to know that it's a lie, okay? You know, I don't, that, that doesn't make any sense to me. Second of all, uh, I think it's a lot deeper than just, you know, the emasculation of black, uh, black people and, and, and all the other kind of stuff that goes along with it. To me, it's a dehumanization thing. Trying to pitch it as slavery was something that we did to ourselves. You know, this goes along with CRT and the theft of our culture. 
and all these other kind of things that they try to use to dehumanize the image of black people. Okay, and I think that's a setup for something. They see what we're doing out here. They see how we're making advances. White supremacy doesn't do things arbitrarily. They have a plan for why they why they do things, why they don't do things. You know what I'm saying? So for me, I feel it's, it's a dangerous thing when you have movies like this trying to play down slavery, trying to dehumanize black people, because it sets this up. Once you dehumanize a group of people, you can do whatever you want to to them, kill them, you know, display do whatever you want to them, and nobody's going to say anything, because as far as the world is concerned, they ain't real people. And that's all I got to say. Thank you, brother. Facts. And and just on some real real side of the game, <clears throat> you can always tell when people do not share our blood. Because when I say that our blood and our ancestors soil, like the pictures that foundational black Americans have in their house today of that great, great grandma that was uh, either still in slavery or fresh out of slavery. See, we know better than to sit up here and start saying somebody who was proud enslavers just 40 years ago is somebody to be championed over here amongst our community. Hell no. We're going to champion the people who built this country, the foundational black Americans who built Howard University and all of these other institutions, our Georgetown University, the Capitol, the White House. You know, while everybody else was still figuring out how to be in a hut in Africa. Let's just keep it a buck. Them columns, them uh, uh, all of them pillars in Washington, C Washington D.C., also the design of Washington, D.C. That's foundational black Americans. We don't have to start looking at perseverance of somebody who was putting their own family members into slavery. I mean, you're talking about that particular king, and when the other king came into power, they just went ham putting their own people into slavery. These are not people to champion. I don't know how the hell you could get there unless you feel a camaraderie with black African slavers. Anyway, next, uh, Atlanta High Tech, it's on you, and then we're coming to tweet. Yo, what's up, man? Uh, what's going on, chat, uh, the room, uh, piece of the space, and everybody else in here? Um yeah, I, I really want to talk about this uh, this issue uh, for a long time because there's a lot to talk about and digest because um, I'm, I'm going to make it short and sweet for y'all. But uh, as we speak, they, they, they basically rewrite, rewrite, my bad. <laughs> yeah, rewriting history with uh, African history and uh, the Homie tribe. Um, they trying to change the narrative right now. And it's not the first time they did it with these movies, but they're doing it. They're doing this shit in the article too with Time Magazine and TMZ, put it pushing out articles to flip the script and trying to say it's women shit. Um, and not not to just say bashing on our women because they 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 know that you know we we had their backs, but this is uh, as you see the proof right there, white women shit. And um, just want to bring some stats: uh, eighty five percent of all teachers in the United States are white women. Uh, eighty percent uh, in the police force are white men. So uh, this is not a uh, you know, a conspiracy. This is true. This is what we're dealing with. And there's a reason why the status quo, it is how it is. Uh, and on top of that, white women has always been the problem with black people, bro. Our black progress, bro. They co-opt the, co the civil rights movement. They co-opt our education system. And they pretend to like you niggas. And they backstab you at the long run. I have no idea why uh, black men to this day love these hoes. I have no idea why black men still fathom these uh, these white girls. I have no idea why we even deal with these white girls because, in my opinion, they're worse than the white the white man. You know, they're worse than the white man, a lot worse. And um, <clears throat> and I, I'm not trying to get emotional here, but I'm just gonna post uh my own research because I did some background check uh with my people, uh in my lineage and um in the movie Twelve Years of Slave. The dude who played Brad Pitt was not real. Uh, the white savior that they had on, on that movie is not real as well. Uh, yeah, they were actually owned by black folks. Yeah, so they're going to keep on lying um, with these movies. They're going to keep on lying with these fake articles they're pushing out there. And before this movie came out, there was real articles about the homie tribe. And now they're trying to change the script. Uh, I just want to tell you niggas, man, do your own research. Uh, Looking who you are. 
look on where your family came from because I didn't know my family was from South Carolina. I didn't know they were um, part of my family was Geechee. You know, um, I didn't know they were from Charleston and other places in South Carolina. So, you know, don't let these white women rewrite your history, bro. You know, just do some lineage before they even get to you. Because white women, they love to, to jump into some new wave, hop in it, and take over. You know what I'm saying? This is your final warning, bro. Because it seems like they're moving fast as fuck. And they, they actually are very, very confident of taking something that's facts and turning it into something that they believe in. So I'm just going to just say, man, like, peace to our, our people in this country, bro. We're still dealing with this shit. And uh, please ban all white women on our platform, bro. They're not your friends. Facts. And I'm going to land, land right there. And that is why we are going to our foundational black American sister, not somebody who is confused with who belongs with us. Sister Tweety, you can go ahead, sis. Well, hello, 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 how are y'all? Big Dilla, Black Alpha, and Mr. Reloaded. I was calling, to, came on to talk about, take it back to the um, images of black women that they um, put on these, you know what I'm saying, on these tele, on these TV shows trying to represent us black women. That's not right. That's not how I represent myself, even like with Lizzo. Do y'all, I'm going to take you, uh, take you back to somebody you ever heard of the girl bad barbie ain't the white the little white girl that was mm -hmm. on the field do you know they have her speaking at a very prestige college oxford but they didn't cleaned her up and she actually got famous and rich off of the black dollar meaning as with woman king i wouldn't i i would not support that um because i'm not a king <laughs> that's for one i'm a woman but i'm not a king i'm a queen i'm a black queen but you see how they want to show the images of lizzo to represent black women but they go and clean up a i don't want to i hate to say it but a a, a, a prostitute <laughs> that that made her money off only span little white girl barb uh bad barbie the little very disrespectful young lady but they didn't clean her up got her looking all uh respectful and got her actually uh talking to the to the college students at oxford and i'm gonna land my plane on that wow this is not even black american i heard she was not black american i'm right right Lizzo no, is Lizzo not black American. Oh, Lizzo? That's I'm what I heard. Cool. I'm not I heard cool. her ass. Yeah, do some research a little bit on that. Mm -hmm. Lizzo. I don't know. She looked Jamaican to me. Yeah, she's something else. I'm telling y'all. That's what I, I believe. But I'm going to look it up. I'll be back. Please, please, please get that information because uh, that would make a ton of sense. Um, black Alpha, I know you want to chime in. Go ahead, brother. Well, Zilla Art Spaces always got receipts and testimonies, don't they? God damn. I say it like this. One of the, uh, and I agree with what everybody has said, you know, uh, on the panel as well. One of the things that we, we realize and we identify when we start talking about this is how, like we said, they go and they try to find these other people. And to the, to the guy who was talking about why don't we watch the movie and all that kind of stuff, I don't need to watch a Hollywood movie that came out in the year uh, 2022 to understand my world history. Okay, and if that's what you got to rely on to watch a movie, uh, to, to get it, you know, your mind right, then, you know, that's beyond me. Uh, but my point is that we don't have to travel overseas and go back in time. We don't need no time machine if we want to see strong black women, the strong black women right here on this panel. And I see you and I understand a lot of you and I'm very cool with a lot of you. Uh, where's this? You know, we can go to Sada Shakur. We want to do that. We want to do a Phoenix Court. We can go there. We want to go Erica Huggins. We can go Erica Huggins. We want to go Kathleen Cleaver. We go to Kathleen Cleaver. You want to go to Queen Latifah? I mean, how you want to play it? We ain't got to get on no plane. We ain't got to go back in time. I ain't got to go to ancient Egypt or the Dahomey tribe. I ain't got to do none of that. And this is what's you know, upsetting them is the fact that they think that we got to travel to see strong sisters. And this goes to prove again that the narrative in which they try to paint is falsehood. We represent who we are and we don't have to travel to find it. Real talk. And, and that's the one thing about this. And that's why I wanted everybody to get a chance to kind of chime in on this situation because See, Mr. Rectangle does not understand foundational Black Americans' culture is our own. And we own certain experiences as family. And I understand. I have friends that are not from, uh, uh, family ain't from America. But see, here's the thing. 
They understand where the differences are. And in this particular lane, this is one that they know, oh, I'm staying out of. Instead, though, I always got to be, I'm looking at anybody funny style who is, is coming to us saying, well, why wouldn't you support this? Why would you? Because first off, you're not going to trick me into saying, go watch something anyway. Hell no. This is what a boycott is. A boycott makes it flop. A boycott makes it fail. And here's the thing. We are right here to be consulted. Don't put nothing out. Not consulting the community, expecting the community to support it, and then have all of this wave of whiteness and mayo and ranch dressing coming at us, telling us what to think. That's not how things work around here. We are foundational Black Americans, and we run the yard. So that's why you seeing things flop, because don't nobody come at us with disrespect. I'm sure this is how things were done in the past. We are an entirely different group. With that being said, Heart Black Truth, do you want to chime in on here before I get to this hand? Hey, yo, yo. Uh, yes, I did. And first of all, shout out to the room. Shout out to the space. Beatzilla, Black Alpha. Um, I, I, I got a testimony, fellas. I got a testimony. I ended up seeing a movie. I apologize. Um, I couldn't help it. I was in one of those situations. You know, I was on, on a date, and uh, you know, I, I let them know beforehand what it was. I let them know how you know they was gonna be looked at. I let them know that I was gonna be looked at real funny style, but yeah, you, know, you, you can't protest, but so much. And barbarian was an hour later. So anyway, do you see a lot of white people in there? Yes, yes, absolutely, and they clapped. Oh, Guys, man. the movie is propaganda. The movie is propaganda. The the movie if you if you're into that feminist vibe, there it's propaganda. They they introduce characters that really didn't have no purpose other than to uh, display colorism. It, it it was propaganda, okay. And um, yeah, I, I, to that dude who was and he triggered me because he's like, "Why don't you go out and see it?" and no, <laughs> no, you're not going to revise and you're not going to revise the history. You're not going to play with that. So, um, yeah, just, you know, shout out to y'all and, and, and the boycott. And I, I apologize. I couldn't necessarily take part in this boycott, but, you know, it, it's propaganda. And that's all I'm going to say with that. Hey, no, you know what? I appreciate that, brother, because it, it, see right there. Uh, uh, we have a person that actually was literally able to go see it. And here's the funny thing about it, Mr. Rectangle. Imagine that. Not only did he corroborate what I actually was already talking about, but even more so about an agenda that does not come from our community. Um, so real quick, Tori and Rain and then Mr. Rectangle. I actually wanted to piggyback off of, um, what was, uh, was just recently said because I remember when um, Nate Parker's Birth of a Nation had came out back in 2016 and how that whole debacle happened and went down like it, like it shouldn't have happened the way that it did. Unfortunately, you know, you can't go back in time and change things around where this is a man who took his own money along with some other people to put this film together when, of course, you knew. The Hollywood exec was not going to put that movie together at all. They literally did everything that they possibly could to sabotage that man's film. That was about one of our heroes, which of course is Nat Turner. You know, leading a a slave rebellion that was probably one of the most inf one of the most famous ones of that time. It's still talked about to this day. It helped like um, inspire more others to do the same. That movie didn't get that kind of support like The Woman King is getting, even though many of us already know what it is. And it's funny because I went to go see that movie on the day that it came out. You know, I wasn't going to let them sway me from seeing it or anything like that. And when I looked around, you know, the theater, of course, it was mainly us in there. But I noticed that it was a um, it was an older PC couple in there. And when they got to that <laughs> I actually did this when it got to the part where they was doing the rebellion part of the movie. 
I made sure to look back and forth between the screen and at them because I just wanted to see what their facial expressions was going to be or like what was going to make them uncomfortable. Was it going to be cringy for them and everything like that? But, you know, I could look on their face like right there. I don't know if it was one of shock or one of amazement, but I do know this. When the slave rebellion parts was being shown in that movie, I don't think I didn't hear not one black person not make a noise or a grunt at the screen as if they were actually there. Because I think it was one of those things where we are, we have gotten so many like slave narrative movies over the years, but never one where it actually showed the slaves fighting back and them actually like really showing it without kind of half-stepping it. Of course, it w- could have gone a little bit more, but you know he was working with a, a limited budget because it was funded by him. Now, of course, we know if it got the Woman King budget, he could have went all the way in, but we know they wasn't going to fund nothing like that. So it is what it is. But it's just a di- it's, it's amazing how the difference is between what actually did happen and what, fiction they put into this movie right here big facts <clears throat> so now with that being said mr rectangle you are up in front of company that is not part of the the, the group of people who are unlearned and un, understudied no we actually know what we're talking about and just for record dr randy short has been in my inbox about this whole movie all, all weekend so that's Dr. Randy Short, not an idiot, Dr. Randy Short. So I just want to give clarification when we start getting throwing out people's educations and whatnot. I'm right here right now because, uh, you know, another, the, bro, the brother elder was over here nudging. So here we are today that this comes from Dr. Randy Short. So please don't start looking at me and say, well, you guys are on to learn and stop it. So please address us with respect. You got the floor, Mr. Rectangle. Go ahead. Hey, I'm wondering, are y'all going to uh, boycott Black Panther 2? I mean, I I wasn't asking to be disrespectful or facetious at all. I'm just, I'm wondering because they have. Okay, so same with with the host. Y'all boycotting Black Panther? Me as well. There you go. For the same reasons, because of white producers and agenda fi- and fictional storytelling, it's mainly the agenda and the danger of the agenda. The danger of the agenda. Okay, so listen. Thank you for allowing me to come up here and speak. I appreciate that. I do want to leave everybody with one thought, however, is that um, there's a lot of perspectives, and we can't, on one hand say that all of this over here don't speak for us and then we get in echo chambers and say all this right here is speaking for us. If we truly across the entire spectrum, then all of our opinions across the entire spectrum actually matter. So so the point I'm trying to make here is while the brother got that interpretation for going to the movie and seeing light-skinned black women as a part of the Dahomey, while he read that as a play to colorism and their agenda that you're speaking to, I read it to what I see in Africa. Not just in the six countries in Africa I've been in, but in that very particular region, Benin in Africa. I see those hues of black people there. So I didn't see that. But that was that brother's opinion, and this is my opinion. The, the, and the thing I want to leave y'all with is, if you have already determined what something is, and this ain't, this ain't the, the don't go see it, don't, don't, don't talk on it if you ain't seeing it part. I'm talking about in general and everything, particularly like uh, the brother who I saw was a, had a, who was a chef in his background. The analogy I want to give is, it really does sound crazy for me for, for somebody to tell me that something tastes nasty without me tasting it. From that perspective alone, it's worth having at least an open mind about checking it. That's the last thing I want to say. Thank you for letting me get it all out. Absolutely, brother. Um, and, you know, you, you are more than welcome to hold the opinion of, of if, you know, you don't want to take a stance against it. Here's the thing. 
we we are of a newer generation and we have to own our position. We take our power. We do not ask or request it. So when we make a stand and say we are against something, instead of trying to come and convince us to move off of our square, how about take the approach to respect it for once? Everybody's been so used to us wavering to the left, wavering to the right. When we say this is what it is, well, man, can it be? No. And I know that this is kind of new for a lot of people, but understand when we say we run the yard, we're not asking for nothing. We allow you to get your talk talking points off. That's a grace that we are bestowing. So in the midst of us having a family conversation, the foundational black American opinion is the only opinion that matters. With that being said, I'm going to pass it to my brother, Black Alpha. Yeah, I kind of agree with, I agree 100% what you just said as well. Um, I do want to say one thing. Um, in 2016, Hillary Clinton, as well as Donald Trump was up for election. They was up trying to run for president. Um, 60, over 60 million people, 60 Democrats and 60 million Republicans voted for one of those two to be the head of the United States, to be in charge of the entire country. But the, both of the men and those families were charged with dozens of rape allegations and sexual assault allegations. That didn't stop nobody from voting for them. They still went to the election. They voted. They voted. They didn't. They didn't hold them to a higher level. That's one thing that black people got to do. If if it's wrong, if pe obviously if people is wrong. If they do wrong, they do wrong. But we're not going to sit and keep holding our men to a higher level. That society is not going to hold them to the same level. And and that I, I say this because last week, like. R. Kelly went to jail again for charges that he already was charged with like 20 years ago. And even though I do felt that he was guilty on some certain things, it still was wrong for you to be du a double jeopardy of what happened to him. And so we're getting better as a community as far as like saying, no, we're not going to let y'all manipulate us. But at the same time, Black people, we got to stay on code. We got to use, we got to have the same standards that everybody else, we got to follow the law and we can't be manipulated by television shows. I kind of got upset when we were manipulated by um, that, that documentary that that person did it was like a hit piece. And all of a sudden, everybody's emotion changed. We got to take all his music off. But Elvis Presley is probably one of the biggest predators and they just celebrated him with a brand new film this year. So the one thing I could say, if I could say one thing is that we have to stop being emotional and we got to say what what is in our best interest and we're going to we're going to the same type of punishment that we give that they give to their people we're going to give to our people it can't be two two levels of punishment where well, we're going to severely punish our men cuz what's going to happen is you it's going to it's going to keep coming and then they're going to keep coming at us and they're going to keep doing it to us on other things not just with involving like things with R. Kelly but with everything so with that, I'll I just lay my plan. Down with R. Kelly, you pushing us. <laughs> no, no, I'm, that's I mean, why I, I mean, I'm not R. saying the wrong person to use though, because he no, down no. bad. He did no, bad, do but you don't understand the if, if it's double jeopardy. No, belong in jail. If it's double jeopardy, it doesn't matter. It's just the law. That's what I'm saying. Is it's the I know, law? I'm just saying, Take, you just used the wrong example. You know what I'm no, saying? No, but even 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 if you use Bill Cosby's situation, people yeah, but Bill Cosby better. You know what I'm saying? No, but here's the it thing. Is a little better. But but listen to me. Just listen to me. When you just re just look at what happened, if you if you're charged with something and you went to jail and you went to and you was in the court with twelve people and they determined that you was not guilty, even though we feel that he did a lot of things wrong, but if he went to court, two little girls, two little girls, you're 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 not you're that's that's why we that's this is the reason why we have sure issues is, because, because it seems like you with that shit on the slick because you trying to like implicate no, you know what, some you know some you're, Kelly you're not on listening. Up. It's the law. What I'm saying. Yeah, I, I'm gonna bail you out real quick, buddy. Uh, I, I you're not gonna win the R. Kelly battle here. Um, you got a lot of sisters in this joint. Ain't no telling what these sisters have lived through and experienced in this joint. 
R. Kelly is the bad representative and you're trying to climb up the hill, we don't have enough time to cover that one. Um, with that being said, uh, let me move on to my brother, Black Alpha. Black Alpha, you there, brother? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Can you hear me, family? Yes, sir. Go ahead, brother. All right. I want to address a couple of things and I want the whole family to listen very, 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 very carefully. What we have to do is understand that the code doesn't have opinion. OK, it's either it is or it ain't. OK, it's A or B. And to Mr. Rectangle, no disrespect to you, Mr. Rectangle, but foundational black Americans, we're grown and we're very intelligent. The problem that this world has is when we make definitive beliefs, we make definitive actions. Everyone always wants to come in and say, well, you know, if you look at it from this angle and it could be an opinion and it might be sort of could if. No, no. Nobody does this with any other group. When the Asians wanted that hate crime law, no other Asians came to them and said, well, think about it. Do you really need it? When they passed DACA for uh, the illegal immigrants, no one came and asked them, well, are you sure? You might want to give us some more thought. Only when it comes to foundational black Americans making definitive statements and making definitive moves do people want to come in. They want to opinionize things. We got to be very cautious about folks who want to opinionize everything we do because an opinion is 50-50. Being on code is exact. That's 100. That's the full 100. So when we speak about things that we're trying to achieve, when we feel that this movie is not a representation of us, when we boycott it, trust and believe, okay, we very intelligent people, we made our mind made. OK, our mind is very, very clear and it's, you know, definitive. We're not sitting here guessing. We thought it out. We don't need to do more research. Only with foundational black Americans do people suggest we need to do more research or we got to see it or we got to feel it or give it two more weeks and figure it out. Nobody else has this type of play put upon them other than us. Everybody else, they make an opinion. They got a thought. Everyone moves along with it. Whenever we do it, we get stalemated by having to second guess us. And to be honest with you, someone who's always trying to tell you that what you believe is an opinion is really someone who's trying to stifle you and that's how you don't make no progress for 500 years because everything you're trying to do and every time you're trying to get off the plantation well let's go me and you zilla everybody in this panel we're gonna get out of here it's gonna be a slave revolt and we're gonna get the fuck off the plantation somebody's gonna come and say really that's kind of an opinion and you should really just get hit a couple more times with the whip first and then make a decision fuck no we don't felt the whip we don't rock with the whip we're getting the fuck out of here so let's be very cautious and careful when we start talking about opinionated things the code is not based on no goddamn opinion okay my ancestors ain't based on no goddamn opinion and how I feel about slavery ain't based on no goddamn opinion. It is 100% empirical fact that we don't rock with none of that stuff. So if we make a 100% empirical fact statement, then that's what it is. It ain't up to someone trying to convince us not to believe it. It's not us for some up to someone trying to get us to move our opinion around or think this different way. None of that. Remember, guessers have opinions, okay? Intelligent people have guarantees. And I guarantee you, that when it comes to foundational black American culture, lineage and heritage, this is not based on something we need to figure out. OK, our ancestors passed down all these things. We ain't in the figure out stage no more. We ain't in the give it two more weeks stage no more. We know what it is. We know what it's about. And we made the decision on how we're going to move. Can anybody in this room imagine somebody coming to your parents and trying to tell your parents, your parents, all right, your, your parents or grandparents, somebody trying to tell your parents on how to raise you and say, well, it's really an opinion that you should do this to your kid. Well, it's really an opinion to your grandma, whether she should whoop your ass for talking back to her. OK, it's really an opinion if you should come in when the streetlights come on. It's really an opinion if you should do your homework. It's really an opinion if you should brush your teeth or you should go to school. That ain't no goddamn opinion. And I question anybody who tries to make an opinion out of something that we know, because what it really sounds like is that they don't really want us to do what we know we need to do. And they're trying to come in the back door by phrasing it as some type of 50 50 split. It ain't no 50 50. It's 100 from slavery to right now today and how we feel about everything. When we wake up in the morning and we do our foundational black American thing, that's not based on conjecture. That's based on reality. So let me give you a definitive fact then. Colonial. I already gave the definitive fact. No, no, it ain't a definitive fact. It is. It's what I said it is. It is what I said it is because I'm the host, homeboy. So take that out of here, the homie. And you can dehome your ass back to Dahomey and you can go over there if you love them so much, Sierra Leone. I'm not sitting, ladies and gentlemen, we're not sitting here debating our culture with somebody. I just laid it out. I just sat here and told him this is how we feel. I sat here and made it clear for this guy how we feel as foundational black Americans. And he still think he's in the position that he's going to change our mind. That is disrespect. It gets to the point where this stuff is just camouflage disrespect. We know how we feel about this. If I feel I want to watch the movie, I ain't got to watch the movie. Why is it hurting this guy? Why he got to call up in the middle of the day? 
and tell us what we need to do. We ain't needs to do a goddamn thing other than be foundational black Americans and excellent. If he got a problem with that, he can fly his ass back to the homie and he can hang out with his the homies. And I'm going to be right here with the FBAs. That's how I get down. And I'm not surprised that guy. He started off saying he was an African-American. So an African-American can go that away and foundational black Americans is going to be right here. And where is that? That's a country that we built and we move how we move and we say what we say, whether he likes it or not. Point blank. Now, you see how disingenuous he came in here with that. I'm an African-American. Well, where are your people from, homie? Sierra Leone on both sides. Get your ass out of here, man. So, I mean, right off the rip, you, you came off absolutely incorrect, fam. And that's just the bottom line. So, uh, yeah, Mr. Rectangle's up out of here. Uh, but I want to go ahead and give uh, the hard black truth a uh, chance to, to rebuttal that. Uh, let's get to Davy Jets. And then uh, we finally was able to get my sister Tweety back on stage. Uh, so Hard Black Truth, Davey, and then uh, Tweety, you got it. Oh, and y'all uh, check out the Jumbotron because I'm about to put something up there. Go ahead, Hard Black Truth, you got it. Yeah, yeah. Um, that, that dude gone, but he <laughs> – that's why I came back up. But first of all, I just want to say – uh, the example he gave, I didn't I didn't give any examples intentionally because I didn't want to get into none of that. But the example he gave, he conjured up. I don't know what he was talking about. That wasn't what I was talking about. And, you know, I, I might be non-FBA, but I'm sure everyone's had a, a, a saying where you don't necessarily have to go and smell shit to know that it stinks. You know what I'm saying? And that's basically what he's trying to say. Um, the movie is propaganda. And, and that's just 100% where I'm at with it. And, and that's that. I appreciate y'all. 